hello guys hope you're all well hope uh, everything's good and um, if you're in the UK if you've recovered from the uh, mad weekend of weather we've had it's like ridiculous temperatures and humidity and Floridian like conditions in our buildings that aren't built to take it so um anyway we aren't built for us to take it should I say um I want to start by saying thank you to all my subscribers the numbers are just going up so fast it's incredible and I think it's all down to this kit to be honest uh, I just hope that when this one's finished that everybody doesn't doesn't go away um, I've been trying to work on the other projects uh, I've just literally finished doing the um, part four of the Bronco working on the booms and I'll be honest when I'm working on something else all I can think about is getting back to this or, or these should I say and um, yeah today is Monday the 1st of July it's the uh, it's the evening now and um, I did a video this morning which I've put up this evening for uh, the FAA Hellcat build with the wing center section with some improvements and stuff learnt from the first one and adding some adding some detail to that so really um, the next part for this one the US Navy version would be part 8b cockpit um but uh do you know what it's monday evening i fancy just chilling and just enjoying sticking some plastic together so i fancy doing the engine so after you've done the wings and everything i mean it's just this this is just i mean there's the wing center section and then we start working on the lower wings and the machine gun base and then we put the wings together and then put some wings together and put the wings on the fuselage and then put some wings together and there's all the different options for folded and and flying and non-flying and all that and as it's been said a couple of people have raised the point this model comes with an option to have the undercarriage up and have it fly in but it comes with no pilot and no stand so i don't know and there's not even provision for a stand as far as i can see normally they put a slot don't they and they say look this is where the stand goes but no there's there's nothing so um I don't know maybe you put it on the drop tank maybe you have it sat on the drop tank yeah um, so I want to start the engine which is part 150 and um, so I'm saying here now this video is part 9 um, whether I put this up before I put part 8b up I don't know but if I do then this is part 9 8b will be next it's just right here right now Monday evening I don't feel much like sitting here with tweezers and looking through magnifiers and using PE and super glue and white glue and blah blah blah. I just want to stick some plastic together. So let's have a look at this engine and see what we think. Now it looks like here once again Airfix have done us proud. I'm just thinking what do those black squares mean? Do they mean do not cement? From my memory of building Airfix kits when I was a lad, I got a feeling that black square means do not cement. So that's a yes, good memory, Nigel. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I was telling you not to glue that on, but never mind. So anyway, here's the uh, engine assembly. So basically, we've got a um, we've got a crankcase with the um, supercharger and everything, the gears at the back. And then we've got the that's a ring going on and then we've got some push rods and then we've got a cylinder bank and then we've got some pipes here which I believe I will replace with wire and then that's the um, baffles that go between the cylinders I believe and then we go over the page and we build up another row of cylinders another row of push rods and then it's giving us the different options for with or without a motor I won't be putting a motor in this one. I won't be putting a motor in either of them, I don't think. Um, I don't have a motor. I don't think the Airfix motor is any longer available. And you can just get a 20 by 13, is it, millimeter motor or something? I can't remember now. If you look online, you can you, you can find a Google search for Airfix uh, motor. I think it's AF10007 or something. And you'll find it on there. Um, you'll find the equivalent you can get them on Amazon or whatever it's, it's just a standard sort of electric motor um, and I think you get a six volt and run it with one and a half so that the prop doesn't sort of go at nine million rpm so there we go so what I want to do and probably this evening I will not get much further than just doing this um, 
because I just feel like gluing some plastic together. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Here's the sprue. Once again, Airfix have done us proud with the uh, the single sprue thing, which I love. And yeah, there's those little um, interconnecting pipes there. I should probably make those from wire, I think. Probably make up a little jig and um, make them a wire. So what have we got here? We've got some nice fine detail on these um, on these fins, but maybe it's a little fine. I don't know, but it does look pretty nice. Um, but first of all, let's have a look at these crankcases. Let's get them off. So what crankcase have, should I say? And then we've got J5 is an option. Do not fit when building the motor. I'm not building it with a motor, so I'll put J5 in there. There we go. And then we're going to be having J6. So I'll just get J6 off the sprue as well. There we go. So what we've got here, which I love, we've got the the sprue tab is actually on the mating face, which I really like when manufacturers do that because it saves you having to clean up the outside. And the best bit about it is if the parts get broken off the sprue in the box, then it doesn't rip a great chunk of plastic off the surface. It just takes it off of the mating face, which is easy to fill and sand or whatever, because you're going to do that anyway. I've got another new green sanding stick here, second one on these builds. So um, yeah, flying through them. These are the floury skinny sticks. I've got a white one here now. I'm just trying, I've, I've got a few of these white ones. In fact, I've got a pack of 12 and I've never used them. So I'm just trying them out. Um, they are, they've got a fairly fine side here and a fairly coarse side there. It's, um, it looks like it might be a nice combination. So let's get these uh, crankcase halves together and see what it's like. It's also, it's as I say, it's July the 1st today. So I am due, well, you are due a monthly update where I thank all my Patreon supporters for the month and everything. Uh, that will be coming probably tomorrow. I'm saying that as I record this being Monday. I should imagine this won't go out until after tomorrow. So I'm talking rubbish again. So, so what do they fit together like? Usual with this kit proper squeeze and a, a graunch and everything as it fits together where it's got no tolerance whatsoever but it's um yeah that's a good fit so it's telling me here to put j5 in i'm not exactly sure what j5 is going to do for us is that going to affect the fit of these going together Nope. So I'm going to get some extra thin. Just use the ordinary Tamiya extra thin on this, not the quick setting. So that's glued in. If you can hear a grumbling like there, that's not me. It's not my stomach and it's nothing else on my body. It is Little Jess is, she's got a bed under here, just under here, just to the right of my feet. And she's got another one over there to the left. And um, this is where she sits with me when I'm doing modeling. Um, and she listens, sits and listens to all these videos. And it's quite incredible. She could be going mad with her ball. And as soon as I start talking to the camera, like I am now, she just goes and lives in her bed. She knows that when I'm talking on the uh, camera that I'm working, I guess. <laughs> if that's what you could call it. I'm just going to cut some of these legs off here. Because I think they're interfering and making it a bit of a tight fit. 
it's not going together so easy. Okay, that's better. I think I'll do the same at the front. So I mean, they they are very large, and they don't probably need to be that large. Okay, this is going to have to be glued and clamped and rubber banded and left and stuff so this we're going to get no further than just doing this actually and then I'll come back to it in the morning so much for my evening of just gluing plastic together eh? I mean I guess somebody could say in the comments well why don't you go and do the FAA engine as well well no I don't want to do that because the whole object of this is I learn on this one and then the FAA build is a is a more straightforward sort of out of the box build for people to watch than me watching this exploratory like for example here when I do the FAA engine I'll take the parts off the sprue I'll clip half those nippers off and I'll just stick it together it won't be all this talk about oh it's fitting tight and blah 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 and that garbage so I'm going to make sure we've got plenty of glue in here because this is going to take a bit of a beating when it comes to sanding I think and I have been led to believe this is about a millimeter or half a millimeter too big but if that's the case I'll be sticking this up this up in the lathe tomorrow and turning it down I've got a lathe so I'm lucky in that respect I'll turn it down until it fits these cylinders but apparently it won't fit inside these cylinders hmm I don't know we'll see so rubber bound time if you are new to the hobby rubber bands they're wonderful things but don't put them on before you use extra thin because what will happen is the extra thin will capillary along the joint and all around your rubber band and destroy the finish now on something like this it probably wouldn't matter very much but um, if it were say like a pair of fuselage halves the last thing you want is all that glue running all around your fuselage and destroying the finish so let's get another one another good old Royal Mail rubber band here a red one find these all over the pavement around here there we go it's good and tight it's got it held yeah so put the rubber bands on after the glue has sort of had a couple of minutes to just sort of gel so that it's not liquid enough that it's going to run round but it's not dry enough that it's going to stop anything bonding together now because it's already glued and it's sealed I can now put some more glue on there if I need to and it won't capillary around because it can't get through the joint because the joint is already sealed with the glue if you like if I put it on the outside it could keep it around and there we go so that's that that's the first two parts of the engine and then this here oh this looks like an intake ring and um, it's nicely detailed but uh, I'm very keen to see what this engine looks like in 24 scale I mean in 30 second scale a, uh, a 2800 twin wasp is um is something to see especially a well detailed one like in the um the tamiya corsair i mean that is uh that's a wonderful kit i've got one i still haven't built it I've got every single piece of edward etch for it and the resin wheels and everything i still haven't built it 
maybe this will inspire me to do it hey so there we go guys that's going to be it for now um and for tonight that was a very quick um session at the bench so i'll um i'll let this go off i want it to be off absolutely solid and then i'll sand it trim it up whatever and like i say if i need to i'll put it in the lathe and i'll tell you what diameter you need to be looking for um if it's going to be a problem fit i've heard that it's a it's a big problem trying to fit all this on there because it's too uh because it's too small or too big sorry so I'll, I'll let you know but um I, mean, I can just do a quick trial now with my vernier calipers sorry my digital calipers not vernier that is 21.03 and that diameter there is 21.1 So yeah, it's not quite round. If I go across here, it's 20.96. 20, 20 Is this round? Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, it's going to be... Um, it's just a bit wide across its diameter. So what we could do... See, now we know this on the next one. Is it the same throughout? That diameter is there is 19.75 and there it's 19.4. So what we could do is um is actually 18.06 18.6. What you could do is sand the faces to bring the diameter smaller because the diameter across the joint near here is larger than the diameter with the joint so if you take some plastic away it will come in a bit smaller what I'll probably do tomorrow is stick this up in my lathe and uh, turn it down um, if I can somehow I don't know how I'm gonna hold it but uh, yeah just take off the diameters and, I'll, and then I'll tell you what size everything needs to be so um right that's it for today so a few seconds for you and uh, I don't know 10 hours for me hello guys we're back now it's uh, Tuesday morning Tuesday 2nd of July and this is all gone off now and I've quickly just gone over and sanded the seams and I've covered it in black magic marker and the reason I've done this I'm gonna put this up in the lathe and I'm gonna turn it so that it's round and the correct diameter to fit all the various parts now before you start shouting I haven't got a lathe the only reason I'm doing this is because I have got a lathe and what this will do this will show us neatly where we need to sand if I start sanding now for example I could sand all the material from here and make those parts fit I haven't made it round I haven't made it central I haven't done anything so what what this will do is doing it in the lathe I'll put it up in the chuck I'll put a center in it and I'll turn it and then we'll see where the material is removed from and I think what we'll find is it's going to be removed from here and here which is basically 90 degrees each side of the seam so if you put the seam at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock basically the material is going to come from here and here 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock so that's what I'm going to do now this part that goes on the back the front section of the gearbox it sort of starts to go on and if we measure it it's got quite a taper in it um, it's 21.8 is this diameter here now this is 21.8 at the front but it goes down to like 21.5 so I'll probably stick this up in the lathe and just put a an angle on it and see what happens there um, this part here is the first part that goes over the uh, gearbox I think it's part of the over the crankcase I think this is part of the intake ring and you can see when we get it on it just that's how far it goes it won't even go over this diameter here so I've measured measured this front diameter here and it's 19.65 and I've got one of the um, cylinders off and that's 19.67 so if we measure across the seam you can see we've got 19.3 but if we measure here we've got 19.8 so you can see the part is actually out of round so um, 
basically what it needs to do is be squeezed in here to make it wider there but then that's not true everywhere like the front section here needs to be I think that's going to whole thing's going to come down in diameter so we could basically grunge all this together yeah and that would be wonderful and we'll put everything out around and and just I don't know I'd rather have it all a nice sliding fit therefore I can paint all the cylinder backs individually get all the push rods painted all neatly and then just literally tap them on and then just glue the front ring to hold them in place so we get a really neat nice assembly then rather than having to grunge everything I and mean, it's like this here you can see I could put it on but it's not really good and I don't I can't feel when it's at the bottom and as I say this one here this front ring um, I can't even get it to go over this diameter at all so what I could probably do is squeeze it and I don't know but I'd rather I'd rather make it round that's pulling that out around basically now so that's not the way a kit should go together so I'll get this in the lathe and then I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you exactly where the material's gone and just to explain quickly what's happened as I said earlier I've measured all these diameters this one needs to be 21.6 it's 21.8 this one needs to be 21 it's 21.2 so that's how we're looking at it now then this one is 19.8 average it needs to be 19.7 and this one is 18.5 this front part here um, that's going to press into the back of the front gearbox and we can see that it's just I mean it could go in but Going to break the parts off of the sprue before anything so um that will do is i'll cut that off and i'll take them out with me so i'll see you in a second after i've been on the lathe okay then guys here we are back from the, uh back from the lathe so that's what it looks like um as you can see all the magic marker has gone from the back all the magic marker except for a tiny bit there has gone from the front a tiny bit there and then we've got this bit here remaining on the actual um, main column itself what I did discover I had to put an angle on these there's about a one degree um, sort of two degree inclusive angle on these because there's there, there's like an angle in these parts obviously they've got draft in the mold so, so it comes off the mold tool so um, I've done the same thing so this part now goes on there just slides over and that'll push onto there now I've made it a little bit tighter because I've got a feeling this leg in here is fouling so I didn't want to make it you know a really baggy fit so that'll be a really tight fit on there well, a tightish fit at least it goes on now um, then we've got the actual engine cylinders themselves and as you can see they now sort of slide on nicely so they don't fall off they're a nice sliding fit so then the front cover that goes on nicely so that'll go on and stay on there and then the rear the front section of the gearbox I realized this peg in here lines up with that slot is tapered so you need to open up that slot um, looks a bit rough because all I had in the garage was a Stanley knife but um, yeah it, it needs to be um, just widened and tapered slightly because uh, the, the actual pin that goes the, the peg that goes in it is tapered and you don't want to let that fool you into thinking it's not going over when actually all it is is that peg so now that fits on there lovely and um, job done really um, so yeah really happy with that um, if you haven't got a lathe you sanding sticks I was going to say uh, when I do the FAA I'll do it with sanding sticks but I've got a lathe so I don't want to um, there's quite a lot to come off of this diameter here so you know you'll need to sand away at that one what I would suggest is do the same as me cover it in black magic marker and remove material from here first until your parts fit over uh, basically this this is out of round um, and it's on all the diameters you've got one two three four diameters they are all big um, 180 degrees from the or 90 degrees should I say from the um, from the part line so you can see there's pen remaining on there I mean I I, I did this, I said I was gonna do this 19.7 I think I've got about 19.5 if you look that's 19.3 there and then we got 19.57 there so um you know even even, even now that's still 0.2 smaller and that's that's a nice sliding fit and what, what I'm trying to achieve here what I want is for he says it's a nice sliding fit what would that go on there 
strange. Goes on that way. It does want to go on that way. How we go? It's obviously a taper in there as well. All of these plastic parts, because the mold tool's got to come apart. You know, it's like this here. This is like a, a cone almost. The mold will come apart easily. If you had a directly straight cylinder, the mold, the, the part would shrink on. You have to have an angle. So that's what Airfix have had to do. And every mold, every plastic kit manufacturer would have to do the same. So you can't knock them for that. Um, it's just a shame they didn't put the same angle on this part to uh, to make it fit. So there we go. So um, I'll get on now and get this cleaned up. You can see it's all got some oil on it from the lathe. So uh, yeah, when uh, when I do the um, FAA, maybe I'll take you out and show you what I actually do on the lathe. Who knows? So uh, anyway, let's get this cleaned up. Just to back all this up, guys, what I've done, I've got the... Um, crankcase halves from my FAA build. Take them off the sprues, got them here and um, I can just clip them together and they stay together pretty well. And because I noticed we got a step here now and there wasn't a step there before. So literally if I measure the diameter across here on the non, let's make sure it's together. That's 22.06 and 21.85 there. 21.5 so there's a lot of material to come off of that end and also remember open up that slot in fact I'll do that now so I don't end up when I'm in the garage doing it on my uh, with a Stanley knife so that slot there needs to be opened up made wedge shaped so that the um, so that the the leg that's in there can slide into it. So I'm just going to take that apart now and just check that on there. And you can see it's locking in there because it's um it needs quite a lot taken out of it. Because you don't want that to be fooling you into thinking there we go, that's better. You don't want that wedge to be think to make you think that you uh, you need to take more off the diameter when actually it's that wedge that's the problem. So there we go. Clean that out. And now that fits in there loosely and won't stay on. So uh, yeah, that's that's the first thing to do. Um, so yeah, the other thing is, I mean, it's like if we look at this front cover, this will not even. I can't even make it bite like there we go I could just make it bite but that's a lot of force to put on whereas with this one now because it's machined down it goes on and stays like that lovely um, so yeah basically the, the what I'm trying to achieve here is the fact that if, if you build the engine and sort of launch it all together and everything then you've got to paint it as one lump um, and if you paint it and then it won't go together then you make a mess of the paint and everything. So I basically want to build an engine that I can come along and try and put this on. Um, where's the leg? You know, I, I can force that on like that, yeah, but I can't, get, I can't get it all the way back. Whereas on this one, I can come along. There we go, put it on like that. This one, I can squeeze it on but no do it this way slide it on and then I can slide the cylinders push rods on everything all painted up nicely and then finally put the front cover on job done and then on the back end put this uh, gearbox cover gear cover on like that so I can build the engine up without using a press <laughs> so um, yeah as I say when I come to do this one I'm gonna glue this together now I'll get it all welded up and then we'll give it a couple of days and then um, I think what I'll do is if you keep an eye out on the FAA build I'll see if I can rig the camera up this camera over the lathe and you can see me actually machine it and see how I do it so there's the engine <coughs> all back all together and that is the I'll just show you the instructions this is basically crank cases going together induction ring going on push rods going on back row of cylinders then the uh, baffle plates that go between the two 
and then we've got the front row cylinders, front row push rods, and then the front gearbox cover. I haven't fitted the spindle yet at the moment, and I haven't fitted the ignition ring either, because I'll be taking all this apart to glue it all together and paint it and everything, uh, and then we're going to be doing all this um, copper wiring. But that's not for today. That's going to be for another day. So, um, so basically, this is what I wanted to show you. Was this is the work you're looking at to assemble this engine. So, front cover comes off. Then I can't pull the push rods off on their own. Here's the front row of push rods. Then we've got front cylinders which I still haven't glued together. Then we've got this plate here. This is, I think it's called a baffle plate. It goes between the two and directs air through and over the cylinder heads. Um, basically, um, this is a beautiful piece of moulding. If you look at it closely, it's, it's um, gorgeous. It's got an ejection pin tab on every single, ejector pin tab, sorry, I keep saying ejection, ejector pin tab on every single part. So it just needs clipping off and sanding, and this one still needs a polish. But um, it's a beautiful piece of moulding, really, really nice. And our ignition wires and that will go through there. Um, and then when you put it on, it basically goes so that this lump at the front is is um, 180 degrees from that lump there. And you'll see that from the side, it's all sort of collapsed down. And what you need to do is just fit it on and just stretch it out as you go and you'll find it will fit absolutely fine. I must be honest, this is the longest it's taken me to fit this. I don't know why. <laughs> this is crazy. Every time I've done this, I've done this about three times and it's gone on really easy. And now that I'm trying to do it on camera, as usual, it's playing up. I know why, because I've got it out of line. No, I haven't. There we go. So yeah, every time I've done that before, it's literally gone on about four seconds. So I don't know why. I've still got cleanup of sprue nibs to do on here, as you can see. But if you know me, you know I don't bother with sprue nibs on seams because I do them after they're glued together. Um, but yeah, really, really nice. So then that ring comes off, and then that row of cylinders comes off, and then that row of push rods comes off, and then the induction ring comes off, and then we've got the cover on the back, and then we've got our central gearbox or central um, crank case which as you know I've had to uh, modify slightly. Um, <laughs> I, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, basically it was just an experiment to see what work was needed. As I say I was uh, led to believe that you had to take a lot of material off here and um, it's not so much on the front this around the backs quite a lot but uh, yeah go back through the video you got all the sizes and as I say look out for probably part five of the, if not it'd be part six, of the um, FAA Hellcat build. And what I'm going to do is do all this again, but, that, but next time I'm going to show you this in the lathe and show you what I did. So you'll get to see this in the lathe and machine then. I'll just leave the camera on and then edit it afterwards. There probably won't be a lot of talking, so I might put some music over it or something. But um, let's wait and see. But yeah, part six, or part five or part six of the FAA build, you'll get to see this machined. Um, probably won't bother showing you all this again. I'll probably just show you all assembled but um, as I say the, the, the end of the day what we're after is being able to just come along and slide these cylinders on after they're painted and everything and not have to worry about trying to force them and grudge them and marking the paint and rubbing the paint off with their fingers and stuff because I may well use our clads on this so um, anyway thanks for watching I'll see you all soon and look forward to part 8b which is going to be something really really special